Hey, it's Dave Brown here, host of Now with Dave Brown on AMI. Check out this latest highlight from the show. There's a new accessibility tool for you to use and it's completely free. TD Lab has designed a plugin for the public to enhance their online experience. This plugin can be used on any website. Samantha Estuesta is the product owner of the TD Accessibility Adapter Tool, and unsurprisingly, Samantha's got a bunch to say about it. Hey, good morning, Samantha. Good morning, Dave. So, Samantha, let's hop in the time machine and go back in time here. Why did the TD Lab venture into the idea of this accessibility plugin? So this was a colleague first initiative. Um, it's not apparent, but I have invisible disabilities. And so I'm often thinking about digital accessibility. And one of the things that we think about here is there's a lot of irritants that our colleagues have when they're trying to do um, work. And there's, you know, there's different competing items in the digital accessibility world to be able to be as productive as you can be. So we took uh, an approach to solve this colleague irritant. We worked with our digital accessibility teams, um, the an external organization called Disability In, and we started to say, okay, what are the sorts of things that we can do to enhance someone's browsing experience? Not only if they have a disability, but they might just have, um, you know, digital housing preferences. There's a lot of people who don't have disabilities who really appreciate dark mode, that sort of thing. Mm. And so we started to do this from the best way possible, understanding what tools would work with other assistive technologies and what's the sorts of features that would make the most difference for our colleagues' lives. So what was the development process and testing process like? How did that play out? So we started uh, first in our lab. Uh, so we're a part of uh, TD Bank as a whole. And we uh, started to create this as a CSS switcher. So we did all of the informal testing that we would do as a lab. We brought this to uh, a partner in our bank uh, called Odyssey. And so there was 6,000 colleagues that tried it out in March. And so we you know, started whiteboarding this in June of 2022. March 2023, we started to test it out with colleagues. We did an external pilot with Disability In at the time as well. And we started to get so many pieces of feedback. And, and at this point, we had already built this in conjunction with our digital accessibility team and our assistive technologies team. Um, and so then we opened it up to all of our 95,000 colleagues in June. The feedback was amazing as they continued to utilize this pilot internally. And we knew it wasn't something that we could just keep with our group. And so September 2023 rolls around and now it's public for everyone. I, I want to dive into the public side in just a moment because making it free to the public is certainly a really cool opportunity. But maybe let's do the sales pitch a little bit here and talk about what the public is going to get for free because there are 18 different accessibility features. We probably don't have time to go through all 18, but broadly speaking, how did you come up with those 18 before we talk about a few specifics? Absolutely. So we listened to people with disabilities and the types of irritants and barriers they had, and we built out a series of disability profiles. Um, we like to utilize disability language, so making sure that it's not something that's hidden within that space as well. Uh, and then we built out features that can be utilized across profiles. Um, each of the profiles that we have in here, be it ADHD or low vision, um, they're all features that are across the solution. So you might say, oh, I want to see what is in connection with my, you know, my episodic disability of epilepsy. Oh, there's other things that might also fit in here as well. And, and making sure that we had something that would be cross utilized by the widest range of humans. Okay, so let's talk about a few of the specifics here, because again, 18, uh, we'd be here the rest of yes. the hour, which by the way, <laughs> not a terrible idea. Maybe, maybe down the road, do a little special, but for now, let's focus on these, on these three demonstrations that you wanna show off. The first demo designed for people with ADHD. How does this one work? So, uh, so the tool itself is a CSS switcher. So the way that it works is that you go into the extensions bar, you'll see the TD shield and you can go to disability profile and we will have within disability profiles, a list of those profiles. We also have browsing experience, co uh, comprehension and perception. So under ADHD, we have stop animation. So you might um, find it very distracting to have videos that go through. Um, we also have a reading guide tool. So a reading guide tool grays out the majority of the screen except for a single transparent bar and that allows you to focus on each individual line of text um, if, if you were thinking about this as a physical tool you might have used a ruler you might have used your finger and this repre represents that sort of technology but in a digital sense 
Oh, I love that. Sort of avoiding that temptation to sort of scroll up and forth and back and down and zipping all around, sort of focusing the experience. I love that. It's really handy. And, you know, if you're someone who works in a bank, you see a lot of transaction data. Oh, my gosh. And that's something that really can help you, even if you don't have that disability. Yeah, I mean, that's it. That, that's not a disability for me. But even as someone who's legally blind, it can oftentimes get a lot of things blurry. It's nice to focus. Yes. OK, what about for people with dyslexia? What features are on offer? Oh, I, I really like the features that we have for dyslexia. So again, you're going to utilize the tool in the same way. You can go through disability profile to, to get to that particular feature. Um, and you'll notice that uh, there's a really neat way that we think about um, the fonting here. So we use the open dyslexic font, which is a font that was actually created by people with, dys, uh, with dyslexia. And so they have changed the characters so they're separated out a little bit more. Uh, the character style goes from a very thin to thick versioning on each letter. And one of the very neat ways that I like to describe this is that in the numeral zero, there's a dot in the middle. And so if you're looking at capital O, you might have some confusion between that and the, and the numeric um, of zero. And so they've been able to make that differentiation. And I love that. I just love that. And there are some functions designed for people who are partially sighted. You had one in particular you wanted to demonstrate. How is this one going to be particularly useful? So I, I think we're going to loop in a few of the ones that we have in here. So under the perception tab, we really do have a series of, of you know, features that are available depending on your own unique needs. So. Um, we wanted to make sure that we were thinking about color blindness for um, different ways that uh, natural versus artificial light could be affecting. So we have different contrasts where you could have a black highlight with white text or a light contrast, which is a light um, uh, highlight with black text. Uh, and then we also have different saturations. So you might be able to utilize a high saturation to be able to see the differentiations of the colors, um, or you might also want to use a low saturation and that still allows you to have a perception of the, the view of the image um, in a way that is more clear. So there's a variety of different opportunities to, to play around with what works for everyone. Um, I myself love the low saturation feature. And then if you go into uh, a browsing experience, you can find uh, a majority of people's favorites, which is dark mode. Wow, so a lot of customization here, which is yes. really, really fantastic. I think a lot of people uh, within the disability spectrum love themselves some customization. They love being able to rig up their tech the way that they like it. So here's what's really interesting to my mind, Samantha. This is an incredible initiative within the company. But you and your colleagues and the organization decided, no, 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 no. This isn't just for internal TD products. This isn't just for TD customers. This isn't just for TD employees. You've made this tool usable as a browser plugin and free. Why that priority? Why that external view? You know, it's it's just the right thing to do. Uh, we saw the impact that it had with colleagues. I know personally the impact that it's had to, to my browsing experience and my productivity. Um, and, and when you have something like that, that, you know, really has this this way of changing the way that people are able to either do work or even just enjoy digital media, um, you can't just keep that behind a paywall. And so that was part of our ethos. It's, it's connected to our inclusive innovation frameworks, the way that we think about uh, the work that we do in uh, our innovation spaces. And so it was it was always um, it was always clear that it was just the right thing to do to release this um, at no cost to the public. Beyond the positive web browsing experience that may come from utilizing this product, what do you think the broader effect could be for people with disabilities? So um, I've been I've been hesitant before in my roles to disclose my own disabilities. Uh, I didn't disclose until I was actually at TD. So it's been about six years that I've been very open about it in my workplace. And, you know, the stigma is still very real. You know, you're starting, um, you're starting to have these, these fears about opening up about certain needs that, that you might have, or even if your needs change during the day. Um, and so there are all of these ways that we can think about addressing stigma by having tools like this. Um, you know, this is a day one accommodation that's available to our colleagues. On day one, you can have this. You don't actually have to go through an accommodations process. You can just auto add it to your machine. And there you can start from there. And this 
give that space to say, you know, this is just something that we should have. We should have accessibility um, embedded in everything we should do. Uh, you know, accessibility is a standard already when it comes to digital properties, but let's go into that hyper-personalization. You, you mentioned it earlier, no one has the same experience. Someone who might have the same diagnoses as me does not have the same uh, experience that I have. And so being able to go beyond just uh, a standard and go into hyper-personalization where everyone can have the experience that meets their needs and doesn't um, interfere with other tools that also support their needs, that that leads to this idea of like, it's it's not, it's not complex to be able to have an experience that works for you. You know, Samantha, I was just talking to um, some young leaders at a foundation, uh, excuse me, at a Fighting Blindness Canada summit over the weekend, and, and there was some talk about independence and accommodation and the exhaustion that can come with perpetually self-identifying and perpetually advocating for accommodation. No matter how welcoming the company might be, sometimes it's nice to have that independence to troubleshoot yourself. That might not be everybody, but I'm someone who does like to kick the tires a little bit before I'm going to go send out a bunch of emails. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and honestly, that's what we got as some of our feedback from our colleagues is that it allowed them to, you know, customize it to their own needs in a way that they could then have that conversation if they needed to have that conversation on their own times with the experiences that they wanted to talk about. Yeah. And so it, everyone is different. Some people like to go in day one with a with a list of all the things that they know they need. And some people like to see, um, you know, what they can tailor to their own experience first and then go from there. And so this is just one of those uh, available tools to our colleagues. Now the public, they can do the same. Samantha, what a great initiative by you and your colleagues. I'm going to share some of the uh, contact information and information for folks to access the tool in a second. But thank you so much for the time that you've taken today. And please keep up all the excellent work with you and your colleagues. Thank you so much, Dave. That's Samantha Estoesta, the creator behind the TD Accessibility Adapter. The adapter can be downloaded via the Chrome Web Store. So the TD Accessibility Adapter, it can be downloaded via the Chrome Web Store. And don't worry, more information will go up on our blog after the show, ami.ca slash now. Do you want to dive into more conversations like this? Watch Now with Dave Brown weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on AMI-tv or download the podcasts wherever you listen. Do you want to dive into more conversations like this? Watch Now with Dave Brown weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on AMI-tv or download the podcasts wherever you listen.